beholder of redemption. For this particular item can only be attained in a place of worship, an abandoned church. The more decrepit the building, the better. You must never attempt this on holy grounds that are still in use. Upon arriving, you must knock door and ask for the century. When you do this, for twelve minutes it will appear as if your efforts were fruitless. Then something peculiar will happen. An elderly man with golden eyes will open the door for you. When you meet him, his gaunt frame and inhuman eyes may unnerve you. Resist the temptation to flee, for doing so can only attract unwanted attention from that which he watches over. Instead, engage him in conversation. When he utters the words, I believe we are nearing the end, ask to visit someone who calls himself the holder of redemption. The sentry will look at you with some confusion, but then smile as if realizing what you are talking about. He will ask you to follow him, but not before offering you a chance to leave. If you do not take this offer, he will guide you down a featureless white hallway. It will be intensely bright, almost blindingly so, as you continue down it. Once you reach the end of it, he will open a door and usher you inside. Do not attempt to get him to come in with you. Even if he wanted to, his duties far outweigh any modicum of comfort or security he might provide for you. Inside will be a minuscule room with a door to the left and a door to the right. In front of you will be a skeleton propped up hastily. It will bear two rings on its fingers, one silver and one gold. For now, go to the right door and pass through. There you will see a man who has committed acts so repugnant, so unimaginably depraved that they defy explanation. He is beyond comprehension at this point, let alone any salvation that men of the cloth might offer. You must grab him and drag him back through the door, ignoring his pleas to stop when you pull him through. The skeleton will rise and stab this abominable excuse for a man with his right hand. His body will rot for eternity among the Stygian bowels that lay before you. Do not look upon him, no matter how much your curiosity might compel you to. His fate does not concern you. Now you must go to the left door. There you will find a little girl who has been traumatized in the most unimaginable ways, and slain for good measure by the wretch you have tossed into the abyss. You must pick up her fragile corpse and carry it back through the door. Upon doing this, the skeleton will approach you. It will raise its left hand, and with that you will see the girl restored to life. Now you must ask her a question. The majority will elicit only a giggle, except for one last question. How can they be redeemed? Suddenly, the skeleton will come before you and begin to lash out at your body savagely. You must endure and not cry out, or else you will surely die, should you wait long enough. The skeleton will cease delivering its punishing blows and will be reduced to mere dust. The little girl will then go to the fresh pile of grime upon the floor and pick from it the two rings. Should you examine them, you will notice that one has an eye while the other bears a cross. She will hand them to you and guide you out of the door. You must leave at once, 
for should you linger, you will be forced to act as another guardian of the pit. The rings are often referred to as Sin and Hope, or Object 506 out of 538. The cycle will continue unless you give in to the madness. <laughs>